Okay, so it's part two of this paper. Sorry for the delays, guys. All right, so I'm still looking at January 2021 mid year paper, right? Year 11. So the last round, part A, I done with the MCQ. So today we are going to look at uh, part B, section B. So I'm trying to speed run this. Okay. All right, first part we have capital expenditure and revenue expenditure. So capital expenditure, technically spending money on NCA related, and then revenue expenditure will be expenses related. All right, so we need to pick a, put a tick, All right? Shop renovation. If we renovate our shop, the value will increase, right? It's like an improvement. It's like an upgrade to our current shops and all. So therefore, this is capital expenditure, All right? Then after that, purchase a new oven, right? Buying a new NCA oven, right? The one that you use to big things and all. So another NCA, so capital expenditure. Carriage, now carriage, you buy oven, you pay one time money, right? So if you pay one time, when you buy the thing, comes together with the NCA, then all this will be part of the NCA also, right? It's not expenses, okay? If it's together with the NCA, then it's part of the NCA. Uh, repair, so paying for repair or maintenance and stuff like that, repainting, all these are revenue, expenditure, expenses. All right, all the re-re one normally is expenses except for renovation. Lah. And the last one, of course, payment for wages, uh, expenses. Okay, so there you have it, capital expenditure and revenue expenditure. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, next one, we have something to do with our inventory calculation. Okay, so how to calculate inventory again? We have to use the basis. The basis is you always choose the lower one. I right? choose the lower value. So we have either cost price or net realizable value. So net realizable value is technically uh, the price of, for example, you know, like this is the mouse currently uh, the okay one, all right? So, okay one, we have the cost price, maybe $1, selling price $10. But what if, like the mouse, this thing is out? So, of course, the value, I mean, I can't sell this for $10, right? Because this thing is like sort of like, uh, you know, broken, okay? So, we are talking about NRV, net reliable value. We're talking about the value of this particular thing at the end of the year. Like, how much was the value? It could be lower than cost, or it could, it could be a higher than cost one, yeah. So you need to know the formula, all right? So that's what NRV is. And our job is to compare lah, whether uh, which one is the lower. Do we always choose the lowest one because of the prudence, all right? Because of prudence. Okay, so not sure, then you choose prudence. Choose the lower value. All right. So calculate total value of Melanie's inventory. So we are looking at closing inventory. So therefore, cheesecake. All right, we have 10 units of cheesecake and then we have cost price $9 and selling price $25. Obviously, we choose the $9. Okay, and then sponge cake, 5 units, 6 and 13. Of course, 6 is lower. And mousse cake, 16 units and $8 is lower than cost. So selling price is lower. So we choose selling price, All right? So four marks question, how to do this? Technically, right, you show calculation. Uh, 10 times 9 will give you 90. And then after that, the next one will be uh, 5 times 6 will give you 30. And lastly, 16 times 8. Mm, 16 times 8 will give me, how much is that? 16 times 8. 1, 2, 8. 1, 2, 8. Okay. So after that, what we do is now we just total this up together. Yep, this total them, then we get the closing inventory value, that's all. So 120 plus 128, 248, right? So 248 is our value of closing inventory for all the cakes here. So this question is quite straightforward because there's no like adjustment. They didn't give you carriage inward. They didn't give you like repair costs and stuff like that. So yeah, just basic. If you want to know more, please go back to check your notes, check from textbook, or find some other questions. All right, next one, which accounting principle will apply? Yep, this is prudence. Okay, when prudence said, when you're not sure, do not overstate your asset and also profit. 
in why is that dot dot there next one uh what is the rate of inventory turnover uh this one is part of topic 17 so uh not coming out this time all right this is topic 17 under the incomplete record if you guys want to know the answer technically the answer is just like this uh oh, donkey okay the answer is number of times right a business replaces its inventory in a given period of time yeah so how fast they replace the old stock which means they're able to sell the new one and then they buy again right so the more time the better lah. that's called rate of inventory turnover right not coming out this time but definitely see them in final exam or even your uh what do you call that even in your igcse okay next one let's go back to the next question all right uh complete the following table stating whether it's true or false all right uh let's look at the statement inventory should be valued at cost and net reliable value whichever is higher is it higher no not higher so therefore this is a false statement we have to look at lower supposed to be lower okay and after that if closing inventory is overvalued then profit for the year is overvalued too well this is a true this is a true statement right i guess it will be faster to show you using the notes again right because all these notes you guys should have it uh but it's, it's last year lah. uh let me just find the notes hold on because all the workings are done so you can see for yourself the effect when we overvalue right when we overvalue our inventory so this is it right the effects when wrongly valuing inventory so what's the effect all right look at this example on the left hand side this is the correct things to do let's say let's say okay sales is ten dollar purchases is five well if you have sales you must buy first that's why you must have purchases okay and when we buy a lot we don't really able to sell off everything so we assume that there's a closing inventory okay so one dollar closing inventory is the correct number let's say okay now what if now what if we overvalue that means we overstate Okay, we overstate our closing inventory so this is the error that we make then what will happen to profit right okay so everything remain the same but closing inventory uh, now become two lor, right more than one so it's overvalued lah. so two dollar then as you can see what you can uh you notice that gross profit from six dollar and now become a seven uh, so when you overvalue your closing inventory then your profit is also uh overstated okay the question did mention what happened to profit for the year right well same thing like if gross profit is overstated your pfty is going to be overstated also okay i hope it's not okay so therefore the statement is correct closing inventory overvalue and then pfty are going to be overvalued too right it's a true statement next one okay if opening inventory is overvalued okay they're looking at opening inventory then current asset at the end of the year the end of the year will be overvalued is this true or false all right then let's look at the notes again okay come back to these notes all right so we're talking about open opening inventory right okay so let's look at this all right the second one so technically when opening inventory is overstated all right so this thing technically brought forward to next year right last year we overstated that means next year your opening will be overstated because closing become opening next year all right so as you can see okay and then we have some effect on the profit part but okay but now we are looking at current asset because the question is talking about current asset so let's look at uh, current asset is there any effect when it comes to current asset the answer is no effect why because at the end of the year the the inventory that we see is actually closing yeah it's always closing it was never opening inventory uh, unless they say the SOFP is at the starting, la, but no, nope, we are talking about year end. If it's year end, then the inventory is a closing inventory. So, therefore, all right, whatever happened to opening inventory, it doesn't affect the closing inventory at the end of it. All right, hopefully you can get this. If not, please try to come back to these notes and then take a look again. La. Okay, so for this part, all right, if inventory or if opening is overvalued, then the year end overvalued, answer is no, no. Right, so this is a false. This is a false statement because it's supposed to be no effect. 
all right? Unless the question changed to closing inventory, uh, then yes. If the question said closing inventory overvalue, then current asset also overvalue. Yeah, that is for sure. Okay. All right, let's move on. Next one. All right, uh, we have question number two. We have Ryan, and then we have something about provision for doubtful debt. Okay, so as provision for doubtful debt, uh, all this uh, theory part, I guess I will just show marking scheme. That will be much faster. All right, technically, the keyword here, what is PFTD? All right, make sure you have the word estimated. All right, this is estimated uh, amount lose, all right, in a year because of what? Uh, because of bad debt. Blah. So technically, I will just write estimated loss in value due to bad debt. Yeah, I'll probably put that. I think it's so much shorter. Okay, I might as well just put here. So what is PFDD? It's a estimated uh, loss in value due to uh, bad debt or irrecoverable, whichever way. Okay, also can. All right, name two accounting principle when we are maintaining a PFDD. So all the provision account confirm is this two again, right? Pasal malam PM. So P is prudence. And then M will be matching. Okay, that's how you see matching means got income statement uh, inside the account already. Uh, prudence means uh, also got balance CDBD, right? The asset go down. Uh. Things like that. All right, so let's do PFDD T account. So first June, PFDD account show a balance of 1,900. Every time you guys see a balance, they are talking about balance BD. It's always, always balance BD. During the year ended, the TR uh, was 48,000 and he wrote off a uh, bad debt totaling 1,000. Ryan decided to maintain the PFDD at 4% of the remaining TR. Okay, remaining TR, that means you need to take 48,000 and minus off with the confirmed bad debt, which is 1,000. Uh, that is our remaining TR. So remaining TR is 47,000. So this one need to, yeah, 4% times with 40. 7,000. And the answer that we get, uh, 47,000 times with 4%. All right, the answer 1880. This answer is our balance BD answer also. But top or bottom, right? Top or bottom, then you have to see the date, all right? So this TR date, this TR date is actually end of the year, right? Uh, if it's end of the year, then this balance BD will be the Yep, the bottom one. Okay, this is the bottom balance BD. All right. Whereas if it's the top balance BD, uh, then the TR will be at the starting, right? Which is like first June. Okay. So actually we can do a quick one to uh find, right? We can actually find the TR value uh in this case. So how do we do that? Technically, they did mention that the balance BD, the top one, is 1009. So how to get the top balance BD is actually the same uh, formula, which is TR times with 4%. Okay, we know it's 4% every year. And the answer, which is 1,900, this is the uh, top balance BD. So if we know the top balance BD and we know it's 4%, then we can actually yeah, find trade receivable at the starting, right? Trade receivable starting. How to find trade receivable starting? Just use your calculator. Technically, it's just uh, 1,900. And divided by 4%, right? And you get the answer. So 1,900 divided by 4%. Um, so 47500, right? So our 47500 is the uh, TR value at the starting, right? This is the start. Okay, TR value. Start. TR value, right? Oh my god, my notes is everywhere. I hope you guys are still following so far. <laughs> okay, now let's put everything into the T account, right? The T account part is actually very simple. Okay, of course, draw a line first. And we have our first information, which is balance BD on top. Balance BD on top, the first one, 1009, is all in the, is on the right hand side. Why is it right hand side, people? Because this is an A minus, the opposite of asset. If asset is always left, right? You know asset is always left at the lead. So therefore, A minus is going to be on the right-hand side. So we're talking about the balance is on the other side. Okay, so balance BD. 
in balance PD on the right hand side. The date is important in PFDD, so therefore you need to make sure that all your dates are correct in order to get a mark. So 2020 starting is June 1st, like this. All right. Then after that, our next part will be uh -huh, we have the balance, the bottom balance BD. We calculated using the formula TR times percentage. Sorry, remaining TR. That means which we actually minus the uh, bad debt already, right? Okay, so draw a line. Okay, I'll draw a line first so that we know top and bottom balance BD is separated by the line. All right, so balance BD 1880 is bottom below. Okay, it's below the total line. And here, right balance BD. Right, and the date, of course, changed already. Right, the date now is uh, 2021 and it's still June 1st. Maybe I should just put down there. Okay, let me just track them. And then it's on down here. Oh, okay, nice. All right. So we have the two balance BD now. And balance BD 1880, okay? You do know that balance BD down, it means it's connected to the balance CD. So we work backwards here. All right, so we work backwards. Uh, I'll just put here balance CD. And the amount, oops, sorry. Typo. CD. Okay, and the amount, same thing. It's also 1880. Uh, the date is going to be year end. Okay, your year end date you can always find it in the question itself. If you look at B, required prepare PFDD for the year ended 31st May 2021. Right, it's all there. Okay, so our last day is 2021 May 31st. Oops, just put there May 31st. 2021, uh, simply lah, put here lah, 2021. Okay, you put near also can. All right, now what do we do? We have to uh, total, okay? In total, we have to put the amount, the higher amount, which is 1900, and the other side also 1900. So people, as you can see, our left hand side is short. Short of how much, all right? It's short of 20. Let me change the color, I think better. All right, so it's short of 20. So what is this $20? Yep, this $20 is income statement. Okay, IS. And IS date is always also your end. Okay, yeah, that's how we do it, right? So just remember, PFDD income statement is the last thing that we're going to find. Okay, yeah. So technically, let me uh, write down the step by step. Our step one, okay, this is given by the question, the first balance BD. Our step two, do the calculation. Uh, I hope I did not miss out any of the parts here. Okay, so just a quick one again, just in case. Um, our step by step for PFDD. Right, so 1009 is a step number one, it's given by the question, the first information. Then the bottom balance BD is the one that we find using the, uh, what do you call that? The formula, right? TR times the percentage. But because there's a bad debt here, there's a bad debt, so we have to minus first. Okay, then we get the remaining TR, then only we uh, do a PFDD, so times it to 4%. Okay, the answer that we get, Okay, because the, the TI is year end, that's why this this is the bottom balance BD. So therefore, we work backwards from here. Okay, we work backwards. So step number two. Then step number three will be balance CD, same number. And then after that, total up everything will be step number four, 1009, 1009 balance, right? And the last thing to find is income statement, right? That's the last thing that we find. So question B actually asks us whether is this PFDD an increase or decrease the which, which means the twenty dollar income segment is it an increase or decrease? So how do you know that? All right, just check the first balance BD, the top one, all right, and compare it with the bottom balance BD. So ask yourself whether this is increase or decrease, right? So this is decrease. Decrease is good or bad. Decrease is good, all right. For PFDD, decrease uh, is a good thing, which means people actually pay us back. If they pay us back, then the chances of that become a bad debt it reduces lah. So it's good lah. Right, good thing in our syllabus, which is gonna be income. Okay, if it's a bad thing, then it's expenses lah. Right. So another way to see this is you look at the TR amount. Now, since just now I make 
uh, I showed that starting TR is actually 47500. Okay, the starting TR okay, on top here is 47500. And at the end of the year, what happened? At the end of the year, our TR is only 47000. Right? It reduces uh, it reduces by 580. Okay, so that's why if we reduce the TR, then it's income. Okay, there you have it. Next one, let's continue. Okay, so based on your answer in B, prepare an extract in the SOFP. So extract is a small part, right? The small part of the SOFP. Okay, so how to show this? We have to show a few things. Under current asset, first thing first, we have our trade receivable. Okay, our first, our trade receivable is here. So our trade receivable, what happened is, there is a bad debt, right? So I cannot just straight away show the TR value for, uh, what's the TR value again? TR value at the end of the year is uh, 48,000, right? But no, it's not 48,000 because there was a confirmed uh, 1,000 that couldn't be uh, collected, right? So we have to bracket, okay? And show 48,000 minus 1,000 so that we have the answer, which is 47,000 here. Uh, this is our remaining TR so far. All right, but can we collect back for the seven thousand? No, because that's why we have a less PFDD, right? So we have to show less or minus. You can just draw a sign there, and you put provision for that full app. Okay, provision for that full app. Okay, and how much is our PFDD uh, for end of the year? So four seven zero 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 four percent of it, which is our one eight eight zero right in sofp the number that you all see is always the balance uh i would say balance cd la, since the date is 31st may right it's actually the cdbd number la. okay in all the t account uh, the balance cdbd number is the one that will appear in your sofp okay uh, or else just remember that so out of forty seven thousand, that how much right because PFDD, we estimated 4% of this number, so 1880. And since we are going to minus this, of course, I'm going to put bracket 180. This is how I show. And of course, I'm going to draw a line, okay, so that 4700 minus 180, I get 45120, then I type the answer on the right hand side, 45. One two oh. This is just how it's done. In India, all right. So that's an extract to show PFTD and the TR part. Okay. Next one, all right? We have some what do you call that? Uh, advice questions. So yeah, people, you have to be prepared. Okay. Ever since we 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 wanted to start to introduce you guys to a IG paper, see uh, IG level whereby they will, okay, definitely, they will include advice questions. So in class, I have not like done all this thing with you because it's not really IG yet, but uh, we will start to put this in. So that's why whoever you, whoever don't do pass your paper, then good luck to you. You probably don't know how to answer, but uh, it's easy, okay? It's just, it's just logic only, okay? And look at the, the question. They say, advice Ryan, whether or not he should sell on cash term only, yeah, sell on cash term only, justify the answer with one advantage and one disadvantage of selling on cash term only. So technically, if any of you uh, taken econs, then you will know that the advice question is actually very similar to your discuss question, right? You have to write the yes and no, the good and bad, right? So advice question, yeah, you have to give. Lah. So here they say only one each, then you give one each. Lah. Okay, it's like similar. Okay, this is similar to the discuss question. Okay, no need to write so much uh, as long as your point is there. But let me tell you this. When it comes to advice, right, which means ultimately you have to give them an advice. That means you have to come up with a conclusion. Okay, so like what is your decision? What is your conclusion? Okay, and the advice part, the last part here is a free mark. Why do I say it's a free mark? Because all you need to do is just, yeah, just say, whether he should or he should not. Like this question says what? This question says whether or not he should sell on cash term or not. So it's either you agree or you disagree with this. So you just write back like, just write back the word like, yeah, he should sell on cash terms only. Like, uh, 
in summary or in the, uh, at the end okay or uh, my advice okay my recommendation uh, i recommend that he should sell on cash terms only full stop that's it just write down the the conclusion that part you get uh the uh the the easy mark is like a free mark to you all right so instead of writing all the things i'm going to just show you guys the marking scheme so that you have a better uh look at all the points here okay so advantage right if we sell on cash terms only right there will be less bookkeeping okay yeah that's the advantage because less uh you see if you sell by cash it's just cash and sales you don't need to open tr account no tr account means no sales return no all the other bullshit and stuff like that right bad debt and all all this don't have so yeah so less recording so it means less bookkeeping okay then uh, no irrecover debt yeah, also okay if you don't sell on credit there will never be bad debts okay uh, you receive cash immediately yep okay no problem with money okay or cash okay and also accept any other valid answer okay that's why anything that is possible which is really makes sense and all uh, we will accept the answer okay let's look at the disadvantages right now if you only sell on cash basis right so there are some customer who don't bring cash right then after, after that and then you don't let them on credit so then too bad lah. cannot buy from you so you will lose customer so this is the disadvantage right or your sales may reduce or due to this all right cannot sell ma. then sales reduce all. it's a bad thing okay may adversely affect customer relationship okay or customer loyalty yep i mean you know people is like yeah you keep buying from that guy because you know that guy give you uh trade discount cash discount you pay early and let even let you like offers you know like helping you like this so that's where you can do a very long term kind of uh, uh buying and selling right with your customer or even with your supplier so therefore this is also the uh disadvantage right and then after that increase security issue so what do they mean by increased security issue is like uh since everything are on like uh, sorry since everything is on cash right which means technically your shop will have a lot of cash yeah if your shop have a lot of cash then that means there are chances that people will probably uh, come in and rob or steal uh, and stuff like that lah. okay so yeah increase security issue so all this is just any logical answers will also be accept all right be acceptable so in this case the last part you see you only need one advantage and this advantage for one each then after that you have to give your recommendation uh, so this is what i mean by it's a free mark your recommendation is any king can just say can just say that uh, he should not sell on cash basis only or he should sell on cash only there's no right or wrong answer you just need to like choose one whether you agree or disagree with that right? he should or should not got it right that's how you do a advice question it's not that hard okay so definitely you guys will be seeing a question like this in your midterm exam all right i hope no problem so let's move on to the next one all right next one is i uh, suspense uh, suspense means errors lah. all right suspense means error so let me draw a line first okay now we have so many errors and uh, let's read the top part okay the total of the trial balance did not agree the difference was a shortage right shortage on the debit side 495 so left hand side there is a shortage so what we do is now we put left hand side straight away 495 okay and the details right what so the details sometimes you cannot remember just look at the required they probably will tell you one right so they say b that's right a prepare the suspense account start with a balance arising from the difference on trial balance yeah the word is here people right the word is given here so if you're not sure go go and read the questions right maybe it's there okay so difference on trial oops on trial balance okay let me just drag this not... okay come on move move mm. Why like that one? Uh, okay. Okay. All right. 
So difference on trial balance, if you can remember, you can try your balance BD, but not necessarily will get the marks, right? So if you can, try to memorize this word. If not, you find it for the question, right? Sometimes it's just there. Okay. So see, we need to do suspense. And what else? We also need to, oh, we need to prepare a journal entry for the two errors, for two errors that doesn't need suspense. Yeah, the one who don't need suspense will come to journal, right? I have to write down the error number. And then we need to write narrative. Oops, yay, narrative are required. Okay, then after that, oh, we also need to identify the types of error, which means uh, the name of the error made lah, in error four and also error five. So let's look at all the errors, okay? And do this. The first thing first, when it comes to error, you need to know whether are you using adjustment method or three-step method. Most of it, we're gonna be three-step, all right? So if I were you, I'll quickly just go through and then see which one have to use uh, adjustment method. Because adjustment method, you just need to straight away, right? Fix the problem. And then if the answer is hanging, you put suspend, not hanging, then no need suspend, right? There's no step one, step two, but the three step one, yes, you have step one and step two. Okay, and how do we know whether uh, you are you using adjustment method? And then we need to see keywords, though, right? So for adjustment, method all right you need to see keywords there are a few keywords here you have all the overcast overstated uh, then we have the under right the undercast understated and then we also have total wrongly right total wrongly or any uh or any meaning like any of the same bring you the same give you the same meaning kind of uh wording or words uh, or the sentence Okay, it is total wrongly or undercast, overcast, and stuff like that. And then after that, yep, also we have one special one. Okay, the special one is uh, you will see the word from trial balance. Okay, uh, normally with the word omitted, but technically the more keyword is like from the trial balance. Okay, you see the word from or in the trial balance. Okay, when they mention trial balance, most of the time it's like there's nothing happened. To the original account it's just that they forgot to put in the trial balance you see trial balance is a list it's just a list like we create another extra list we do all the accounts we do all the t accounts done already but we create an extra list to see in the end whether the whole thing okay or not, balance or not the numbers are okay or not before we do the uh, income statement and SOMP. okay uh, so if it's not from the trial balance uh, then this is a special one the special one where the whereby the answer is like it's a no entry answer, right? You have to choose no entry. And then the amount is zero or dash. Or you can don't put no entry, you can just put dash. And then the amount also uh, dash. Uh, this is what I mean by the special answer. Uh, okay, only when you see the word from the trial balance. Okay. So if you see any of this word, then we use adjustment. If it's not, then it's three step. For adjustment, of course, you need to know the uh, ADE. So as long as you are familiar with uh, ADE. LIC at the lake, that means you know which account they are, they belong to which um, elements, okay, uh, then you were able to do this, uh, okay, and because technically overcast, overcast need to go opposite to fix the problem, if it's undercast, not enough, you need to go same side, right, so that's about it, and now we look at all the errors, all right, the first one, the total of the page uh, purchase account, 3842 have been carried forward as 3824. So this one, the total, right? This the total of the whole page of all purchases. Suddenly the number wrong. Okay. So this is not number wrong because of the word total is there. So they're trying to tell you that this is total wrongly. So therefore, we have to use adjustment method here. This one. Okay. Number two. Do we need number two? Number two, no, don't have because there's no overcast, there's no uh, keywords there. What about number three? Ah, uh, number three, yes, there is a word from the trial balance. Ah, uh, this one also need to use adjustment method. And I take a quick look here, everything, the rest, oh, no, no need, right? It's just one entry, have to use adjustment. The rest are all three-step method, okay? So we quickly uh, uh, fix the, uh, the one and three verse. So answer number one, all right? Final answer straight away, fix the problem. So what happened now is purchases account supposed to be 3842 but they become 3824 so the difference 3842 minus 3824 is actually 18. so that means uh it's undercast right so supposed to 3842 now become 3824 
So they are undercast by 18. If it's undercast, that means we have to go same side, right? Then you have to ask yourself, purchases account is normally yeah, on which side? So purchases is expenses. Expenses is on the DR side. Therefore, we go same side. Lo. So therefore, we have to DR purchases $18. All right, so we fix the problem already, right? Fix the problem, but our answer is still hanging, yeah, because double entry cannot just DR, right? And no CR must have DR and CR. So answer still hanging, therefore, I put suspense as a last answer. CR, suspend, 18. So that's how we do it. All right, then let's jump to part number three. Okay, the balance of petty cash book have been omitted from the trial balance. So this one, ask yourself, petty cash. Uh, is on which side okay so the final answer straight away petty cash is asset right petty cash is asset asset is on the dr side so for the special one what we do is we don't do anything to the dr side which means we dr nothing and the amount also nothing right if dr nothing means you don't put anything on dr side of any account now, there's no account being affected on the left side that's what you mean Right, because yeah, petty cash is just missing from trial balance. There's nothing wrong with the original T account. You can't DR, you can't CR. You DR petty cash, your petty cash now become more. You CR petty cash, your petty cash becomes zero, no more. <laughs> All right. So in that case, what we have to CR here. So our answer is still hanging. We CR suspends. Okay. Of course, your suspend can't be nothing. It has to be one hundred. Okay, follow the amount that was being missing. So this is how we do one and three. Okay, so the rest is going to be a three-step method. So when it comes to three-step method, I would like to have an extra page so that I can show all the uh, workings. Because what's important for you guys will be the workings, right? How do I reach to the answer? If I just share marking scheme with you guys, uh, you probably can't, uh, what do you mean? Uh, we probably can't like uh, uh probably don't know how to get to the answer lah. it's like oh this is the answer but how do i reach to this answer okay so you need the step-by-step -step working so we're looking at okay the first one error number two red color right so error number two four five six seven are all red color are all three set method so check received from samuel have been credited to accounts of sumel all right so check received from samuel our first line itself we can do our correct double entry check receive from samuel okay so we are doing we are doing uh two right so dr check receive for dr bank and we are going to see uh, the correct one is samuel right yeah samuel yep samuel 350 okay then what happened now so that is our first step okay this is our correct first step okay this is our correct first step then now we do our second step. Okay. So what is wrong now? Second step. What is wrong? They say they credited, you know, they credited to Sumael. When you see the word credited means they CR. But they CR to Sumael. Okay, that means they CR to Sumael. <laughs> okay. But uh did they say anything about the bank? Yeah, they didn't, right? They only say Samuel have been credited to Sumel, right? You, you have to do more to get used to the accounting language. You have to understand that which one did they, do they screw up, right? So they didn't do Samuel correctly. They put, put the wrong name, okay? So the bank part, we assume, we assume that is correct. So we DR bank, right? So that's our step number two. So here, then only we can do our cut, right? So technically bank has no problem. So that's why we ignore bank. Now we just need to fix the last one which is what do we need final answer all right so what do we need we need samuel right cr samuel so we put back the one that we need and then we check the second step which is right the wrong thing that they did uh, this thing is wrong right if you don't want this thing you have to remove because it's wrong already we need to remove it out from the account so therefore we go opposite so dr sumail okay Okay, so this one needs suspend or not? Uh, no need because you want to put also cannot. The RCR all occupied already. All right, so this one don't need suspend. If don't need suspend, we are going to put the answer in the journal here, right? It's required by them. The one that no need suspend, you put in the journal. So let's do error number two, right? The answer is Samuel. 
and the D, uh, the CR is Sumail. Okay, Samuel, let me just make it big. And the amount is uh, 350. So debit 350 here, and then this is CR 350 for Sumail. All right, and they said narrative are required. So how to write narrative, okay? So let's go to the question the thing. If you're not sure, all right, just copy the whole thing and then you add the magic word now corrected. That's the magic word when we are doing uh narrative. Okay, narrative are required. So just put here and remember the word now corrected. But you cannot just put the whole just just put now corrected. You have to like you know write down what is wrong. What is wrong, comma, now corrected. Okay, so you can copy the whole thing and then put now corrected. That's the confirm correct ways of doing like confirm can get marks done. All right. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna summarize and make it shorter a bit. So check receipts from Samuel have been credited to account of Suma L. So hmm, what do I write here? Okay, so check from Samuel had been credited to Sumel and then comma now corrected. Okay, you don't need to put the word account. That's totally okay. All right, easy peasy. Like that. And you're done, okay? And draw a line, lah, right? To separate this with another error. Easy peasy. Let's move on to the next one. We have uh, number four, All right? Error number four. Repair to motor vehicle have been debited to motor vehicle account, All right? So we've been seeing this in uh, parcel paper a lot. Okay, so now... Once again, let's do this. So let's do error number four, right? The first step will be the correct double entry. So repair, right? Repair. Repair is the first line, okay? Repair to motor vehicle. So repair is expenses. So we debit, okay? Debit repair account. And when it comes to expenses, of course, you paid for expenses. So we will simply just see our cash. I know they didn't say, but we assume, right? So this is the correct double entry. Okay, DR repairs CR cash. But what's the wrong thing that they do now? They went and DR, okay, they said debited. Okay, let's look at the question again. They say it had been debited to motor vehicle account. So debited, so they're going to DR motor vehicle. Okay. That means they didn't do the uh, repair. They go and motor vehicle. Oops. Come on. All right. And did they say about the cash part? No. So if it's no, then we assume, right? We assume that the cash part was okay. The only wrong thing they did was they put the wrong name, right? Supposed to be repair, but then now put in the motor vehicle. So the name is wrong. And not just that, the class, the element is also wrong because repair is expenses, motor vehicle is asset. Okay, so this is also wrong. So what do we do now? Okay, we can cut, we can cut cash and cut cash. So what do we need? We need repair. So the final answer will be debit, repair. And we don't want motor vehicle, so we go opposite. So we CR motor vehicle. Easy. Do we need suspense here? No need because the CR occupied. So there's no suspense needed. Then we put this answer in the general journal. So the repair motor vehicle, the amount is 85. Okay, 85, 85, 85. This is error number four. DR repair and CR motor vehicle and the amount is 85 and 85 okay then we have to write narrative so the narrative i'm just going to put repair had been debited to motor vehicle former oops okay let's drag this one Okay, comma and then now correct the done. Easy. Hi. So and then I'll just like you. Uh, actually, don't need to draw. Also, can uh, never mind uh. Of course, they only need two, right? They only need two. So they say just need two errors only, right? So the second one don't need already. So six marks, right? So each mark technically each answer is one mark. So like Samuel one one mark, Sumail one mark. Narrative one mark, repair one mark, motor vehicle one mark, and then the narrative another one mark. Yeah, that's this is how we get the six marks. 
Okay, so that's how the marks are given. Okay, since they also talk about uh, identify the types of error made in error four and five. So error four, error four, error four, error four. All right. So this is what is the name of this error? Error four. Okay, repair is expenses, and then motor is asset. Wrong class and wrong name. This is error of principle. Okay, error of principle. Right. Don't spell wrongly. Okay, it's P L E. Okay, error of principle. Principle can. Okay, next one. So we have next one is ah number five. Okay, purchase of computer four eight zero zero on credit from Steve have been debited to Steve and credited to computer account. So people be careful, right? Don't because you see the word purchase, you thought it's purchases. No, no, all right. I have to depends on what we are buying. In this case, we buy computer, and we are not the computer reseller. That's why we don't open purchases account. Right? Supposed to open computer account. But another keyword here that you should focus is actually the word debited and credited. Yeah. When errors like question like this, when they tell you some account debited and credited, like, most of the time this is a complete reversal. Yeah, the ballet AD, right? Wrong side AD. So they do a wrong side error. Okay, it's called complete reversal. Oh, since just now they asked about uh, error number five, what's the name of the error number five, right? In the bottom part here. Yep, so error five is actually complete reversal. So let, let's write down error of complete reversal. Okay. And how do we fix error of complete reversal? Ah, complete reversal, actually, there's a shortcut, the shorter way. Just remember when you wrong side, we you to get back to the correct side, your amount must times two. Okay, amount times two. So technically, all you need is just ask yourself what is the correct double entry, okay, and then the amount you times two. So purchase a computer on credit from Steve. We are buying computer, so got more computer, so DR computer. Okay, supposed to DR computer. And who do we see? We see our Steve because we didn't pay. We buy on credit. So supposed to be like this. That's why you see they go and debited Steve and credited to computer, right? So about the ballet AD. So the correct answer is your uh, the number, right? The amount cannot be put for it really. So it have to be double, right? It's just times two. So become nine thousand and six hundred. Okay, four eight zero zero times two is nine thousand and six hundred. Okay. Uh, if you choose, if you choose, so since this one also no suspend needed, right? Because the are occupied. If you choose to put this answer, uh, then you can write this in your journal. Okay, since I still have space, might as well. Okay, you don't need to put all these things because you just need two. But if you want to put number five, you can. So number five is actually there be a computer. And then after that, CR Steve. And the amount is 9,600. And here also 9,600. Right? And the narrative, how to write a uh, narrative, this one. Very long. Uh. I mean, I probably won't choose this. Uh. But yeah. Okay. So it's, you have to really write like computer have been, uh, purchase a computer on credit, have been debited to Steve and credit to computer account, then now corrected. Like literally just copy the whole thing. All right. Unless if you guys want to take a risk, there's another way of writing the narrative, which is to actually write down the name of the poor CC. Now, only apply to poor CC. Uh. Yeah, you cannot use it on those sado errors one. Only post CC you can. So how to write this? Okay, you can just say uh correction of error for complete reversal. Okay, but you must give the correct name. Lah. If the name is wrong, then your narrative is gonna be GG. Okay, so this one is quite risky. So I don't recommend this. I'd rather you copy the whole thing than put the word now corrected. All right, so that is how we do uh, all this non uh, the non suspend which is post CC. All right, we still have two more errors, six and seven. So let's look at six. The total of the discount allowed in the cash book two fifty have been credited to the discount received in the ledger. All right, so okay, one of the IG favorite like to test this one. Okay, this is actually a double something one. Okay, so discount allowed error number six. Error number six. Let's do it on here this part here all right so error number six discount allowed all right so ask yourself discount allowed is always debit because it's expenses right discount allowed uh 250 
And then what account do we see uh, right so if you give discount you give to trade receivable so please do not see our cash lah. but if you accidentally put cr cash or so uh you are in luck lah, okay in, in this error question because later on it will be cancelled out all right so what happened now they say the discount a lot they, they didn't do okay they say the total discount a lot have been credited to discount received so yeah they screw up this part they didn't do discount a lot but instead, they went and CR to discount receive. Okay, 250. Yep, they didn't do discount a lot. They go and CR to discount receive. But they did not say anything about the trade receiver part. Okay, so what we do is we assume they did this correctly, right? They did the trade receiver part correctly. All right. Uh, then it allowed us to, uh, to just cut the the tr part which is why if i say like if you accidentally put cash or double entry do wrong well you're in luck but well, you just have to make sure that you know uh assuming that they do that part is correct so that you can cut lah it's like it doesn't matter whether you you put a uh, tr or what but you know you get to know the correct double entry man all right so our last part okay our last part final answer okay put back the one that we need first we need discount allowed so David, discount allow one. Uh, sorry, uh, two hundred fifty. Okay, and then after that, we don't need discount receive. Uh, this account is wrong. So if you don't want this, you want to remove this. We go opposite. So another DR answer. Okay, so DR discount receive two hundred fifty. Okay, so. Is my answer hanging? Yes, answer is still hanging. All right. So if it's hanging, then we just insert suspend as the last thing to do. So CR suspense and the amount is 250 plus 250. So it becomes 500. Ah, this is the correct answer. Okay. Uh, we are not writing this in the journal. Yeah. Okay. So later we need to put it back in the suspend account. Lah. So this is our answer. All right. That's six. And the last one, let's do the last one. Seven. The total. Of the analysis column for postage in a petty cash book have not been transferred to postage account in the ledger so what do they mean by that is uh he's supposed to open a postage account but he didn't transfer mean they didn't open a postage account right but they did correctly for the pet uh, the petty cash part right total of the analysis column so if you guys not sure what i'm technically talking about i just want to show you a quick one Petty cash, petty cash, petty cash, petty cash, petty cash. Uh, uh, I'm just here now. Okay. Yep. Right. So, for example, right, for example, let's say this is how petty cash looks like. And look at you know, the number in the postage and sessionary. What do we, what we do with at the end of the month is actually we total everything. And then this total, 196160 right they will they will go to the individual t account because this is a petty cash book right so this is just column this is not t accounts yet it's just column money okay this is the petty cash t account so therefore uh, the total will appear in the nominal ledger you can find your postage cleaning traveling all this and everything is put on the left hand side lah. so the question what they mean is they did not transfer okay or they did not post to postage account means uh, they did not open uh, they did not open this part so this part is empty that's what it means in the question right they did not transfer to postage account right so this is actually a single entry so let's do this right this is error number seven right postage okay the are postage and because yeah it's just missing so we put it back already so we fixed the answer already right we fixed the problem with it but 
our answer is still hanging okay you cannot just leave it like this so we need to see our suspend yeah when it's hanging you see our suspense what's the amount here uh 67 okay 67 and 67 all right done so all errors done okay but right now what account are we focusing right so we are doing suspense t account so we have to focus on any answer that gives you suspense so we have cr side suspense 67 cr side suspend 500 anything else here nope uh, we still have the top part here yep we still have a cr again okay for the 18 dollar and after that we have also cr a 100 so we have cr cr and then after that uh cr so also cr very good okay so everything also put on the right hand side okay all also put on the right hand side okay let's do the first one okay from double entry Level one change to T account, right? It will flip, right? So CR suspend means CR side 18, right? Put the $18 on the CR side. And then what else? We also have the $100 CR side also. Okay, $100. I will do the details after this. Uh, then after that, we have suspend 500. Now, this suspend 500 is made up of two things. So you cannot just put 500. So you have to split them. Okay, so I have to split it to 250 and also 250. Okay, and after that, uh, last one is 67. Okay, let's put all the number first. All right, now we come back to that, the details, right? So the details obviously cannot be suspense. Lah. If that, then everything also suspense, man. Doesn't make sense, right? Title suspend your details, also suspend gg.com, man. All right, so what do you write for details? Uh, they write the, the, the opposite thing, oh, right? So purchases, 18 is purchases. Oops. Okay. Ah, the one hundred. The one hundred is uh, eh, nothing here. Oh, sure. How to write that? Like that. Ah, nothing here. Never mind. Because the ah nothing means we don't debit any T account. But when it comes to the T account suspend, uh, we are doing suspense, ma. Right. So the details is the reason. Like, yeah, why suspend got one hundred one? What is that one hundred? And then you read back the question. The balance of petty cash has been omitted. So it's it was petty cash that is missing. So here. You have to write petty cash off. So you cannot just leave it like nothing there, okay? So you have to put petty cash. Right, for this 100. So that's what CR suspense means. Nah. CR suspense means right hand side got 100 and the details is because of petty cash. Right, the 250, the both 250 is actually our discount allowed and also discount received. Okay, so just put it back here. And the last one, 67 is postage. Oh. So let's put back postage. All right. So is dates important in suspend account? No, it's not important. So you can don't put. But if you want to put, la, if you want to put, la, uh, then you follow everything also. Uh, this this date, lo, 31st March 2021. La, right? uh, this is where the trial balance, not balance. Uh, then we just follow back this date. But anyway, no marks given. So don't bother. Okay. All right. Then after that, what do we do? T account as usual. Let's balance it. And let's see whether is it same left and right side. Left and right side. If it's not the same, it's okay one. Not every time you get it same one yeah so like for this question okay you don't get it you don't get the same uh left and right side equal so right hand side should be more 500 600 so 600 okay i think i just put 18 plus 100 plus 250 plus 250 which is 500 then plus 67 total is 685 all right so this part here is 685 the other account also, I mean, the, sorry, the other side also 685. And we take 685 minus 495. And we still have 190. Okay, 190. So this happened to be our last thing to find in this account. So 190. What is this 190? And as usual, this is just normal balancing, right? So 190 is our balance CD. And after balance CD, don't forget to do your balance BD. And the number is the same, 190. Okay. So actually, what does that mean when you have like still have balance BD? It just means that you have not found all the errors and not all errors have been corrected. Yeah, it can be like this. Uh, but usually the question will be, you know, will we make that the left and right will be balanced? Uh, usually, like, I won't say every time. Like, yeah but for your for your case you need to know so how to get seven marks here seven marks so should be one mark 
sorry, five, six, and seven. And there's no CD. Six and then balance BD, uh, seven. Uh, right? So each of these correct one is one mark. Uh, so that's how marks are given. Right? I hope everyone is okay. If you are tired, uh, you can always skip this. You know, if you are good at this, you can skip and then go. Just go and just go to the part that you want to revise for the question. Okay. Now right, we have Vanessa here. Right? Vanessa is a trader who buy, buy and sell on cash and credit terms. So she maintained a full set accounting record and she prepared a monthly control account. Right. So first part asks us to name the books of prime entry, for. Uh, these few things where you do your control account, right? So where can we find purchases return information? So books of prime entry, we have SJ, PJ, SRJ, PRJ, CB, PCB, and also general journal, GJ, right? SJ is sales journal, PJ is purchase journal, SRJ is sales return journal, then purchase return journal, cash book, at the cash book, and general journal. So where can we find purchase return? It's going to be in the purchases return journal. Purchases return journal. Yep, you need the word journal. Okay. And then where can you find discount receive? Discount receive. Uh, the column is found in cash book. Right, it's there. And what about contract entry? Hey, this contract entry is not the cash book money in, money out, both sides. This contract entry is in control account. Contract entry... This guy owes you money, right? Like this trade receivable owes you money. But at the same time, the same guy is also your trade payable. Like that means you also owe him money. Yeah. So it's like he owe you, you owe him. So what do you do? Yeah, you do a contract. A contract is like to cancel out, right? To cancel out the amount that we owe each other and depends on who owes who more and then you have to balance. Lah. But when it comes to contract, we need, we need to only know like how much to contract on, right? So contract don't happen all the time. So when it happen, uh, it's a rare thing. It's a non-regular. So therefore, we're gonna use general journal, okay? General journal, or you can just put the word journal. Journal means general journal, lah. All right? That's how we get three marks here. Then we have Vanessa provide the following information. We have debit balance on sales ledger control account, credit balances on sales ledger control account, and then total of the month, blah 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 blah. And after that, ooh, everything here. Hey, there's a question mark here. So obviously, question mark is something that we need to find. Okay, and then what are we doing? So select the relevant relevant figure and prepare a SLCA okay for the month, and then balance it. And after that, oh, there's one last uh, part. That's right, not, not one last part, but there's a part for advice again, right? Okay, so select relevant means there are things that's not relevant. Okay, should be and don't need to be in there. Right, so let's draw a line first because sales ledger control account is a T account, okay. And sales ledger control account is actually our trade receivables, all right. So trade receivable is asset, okay. The DR side is positive, CR side is negative, lah, right. But you know my style, I don't really care about the positive and negative, right. I will always go with the double entry. So let's look at all the double entry first. Okay, all we put back, whatever they give us first. Okay, the first one, we have debit balances on the sales ledger control account on 1st April. So what, whatever I say, every time you see the word balances, balances, they're always referring to balance BD, right? It's always balance BD. So since they say debit, but debit, lo, uh, left side, okay, balance BD. And then hey, they say credit. Then the credit side, CR side. Okay, so let's put these two uh, balance BD first. So 6530 on the left hand side, because debit side, so 6530. And then on the right hand side, we have uh, right hand side is 110. Okay, and both the detail also write balance BD. Okay, both the detail also write balance BD. Yep. Okay, is date important in control account? No, nope, dates is not important. So if you don't put also, it's okay. But if you want to put, then of course the starting date is going to be 1st April 2021. Lah, right? So let's put lah, uh, 2021. Yeah, I hate it. I just don't put here. Put here lah. 2021 April 1st. 
Okay, then here also same thing. 221, April 1st. All right. Then after that, now, uh, I'm going to do all the working first, which means I'm going to do all the double entry first. Then only we see, we focus whether we should need or don't need. All right. So credit sales, okay, credit sales. Credit sales double entry, okay? Credit sales mean we sell on credit, so people owe us, right? We are what, see are what? I'm gonna do sales first, because sales is always, always, always CR, it's income. So CR sales, all right? And therefore, debit trip receivable because they owe us, okay? What about cash sales? Cash sales double entry, the easiest one, my favorite. So DR cash, CR sales. Okay, sales is always CR, remember? Okay, then next one, you see the word receipt. Receipt from credit customer. What does receipt mean? Receipt, okay, or proceeds. Okay, the word proceeds or receipt, this means we gotten the money. Okay, we gotten the money from our customer, which is why we issue them a receipt, which means we get money, all right? But here they didn't say whether we get cash or we get check, right? So therefore, your double entry, has to be both low, right? And that's the safest answer, which means we DR cash or bank, right? It can be cash, it can be bank, okay? And we CR, yeah, so TR give us, right? They give us, so we CR, TR. So I always leave TR as the last thing to do, the TR, TP also. I always do the one that I know for sure uh, this is the correct double entry, like money, I receive, so confirm DR cash or DR bank. All right, like sales. I know sales is always CR because it's income, so I do sales first, then I put TR last. All right, next one we have discount allowed to credit customer. So, discount allowed, ah, I'll do discount allowed first because discount allowed is an expenses, it's always okay. And who do we credit? All right, we CR trade receivable, we don't CR cash. You allow people discount, you don't give them money, so we CR TR. Okay, next one returns by credit customer we move this over a bit so that i got space to write okay so return by credit customer return okay so the account that we need to open is sales return and yeah i'll do sales return first because sales return is always debit and who do i credit i credit trade receivable so let's move this answer out here a bit all right Okay, next one we have debts written off as e recoverable. So debt written off. The word written off, it just means bad debt. Yeah, so ignore, right? Don't, don't worry about what, what's written off and no. Then you see it recover. It just means bad debt, right? Written off just means cancel off, right? It become a bad debt. So bad debt account, bad debt account, double entry. Bad debt account, double entry. Let's uh, put here, okay? So bad debt, yeah, bad debt is expenses, right? Expense always debit, so debit bad debt. Or you can put e recover debt. Okay, and what do we credit? Okay, we credit trade receivable. Uh, they are the one who cannot pay us. So we credit TR. Oh, good, yes. Increase in PFDD, all right? Increase in PFDD, the double entry for increase in PFDD is actually the uh, income statement. Because increase is not a good thing, right? Increase value is not a good thing. So the debit income statement and credit a PFDD account. It has nothing to do with a TR account. Yeah, this is an irrelevant things, all right? Yeah, the double entry itself here, the income statement, CR PFDD, nothing to do with TR. So you don't need to put this actually, all right? What about contra entry? Now, when contra happen, when contra happen, all right, our PP and TR account, it, they will reduce, all right? So the double entry for contra is always uh the same is fixed right it's always debit tp and you see our trade receivable uh, this is fixed if you're not sure of this then you ask yourself in the t account uh, this is where the the plus sign and the minus sign is useful right so if contra happen then of course you're going to follow the 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 minus sign lah, right because it will reduce okay so if contra happen follow the minus sign remember this that's why we're going to do crtr this is fixed here is fixed Right, and the last one, we have interest charge on credit customer overdue account. So customer owe us, we charge them interest. If we charge them interest, this interest is a good thing for us or bad thing to us? It's a good thing, right? Yeah, it's our income. We're going to earn if they pay us. Lah. But anyway, we charge first. We don't care. So what account do we DR? What can we CR? So interest. We charge customer. This is an interest received. Interest received is always a... 
debit because it's income. Okay, we are getting interest. So who do we debit? Now we don't get money, right? So we cannot DR cash or bank. So we DR TR. So they owe us. Okay, so this is how we do this. All right. Uh, then after that, we also have debit balances and also credit balances. So once again, all right. So let's do the balances first before we put in all the other answer. And then this is the bottom. This is the first, maybe which is the, the next month, right? If it's next month, means this is the bottom part already, okay? Because you see the word balances. Balances means what? Balances means we are talking about balance BD again, right? Balances means it's balance BD, okay? It's always balance BD given by the question. And debit and credit, so we just follow only, right? So debit side, do we know debit side? We don't know, right? There is a question mark here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the uh, total line first. Let's draw total line first, total line. Okay, so balance BD debit side, we don't know, so we cannot put low, have to find all this thing. So I won't put first. And then balance BD credit side is given, it's 80, right? So credit side, yep, we know. So therefore, let's put $80 on the credit side. This is known as balance BD. You want to put a date then is, uh, this is May 1st really. Okay, May 1st. All right. Since we know the balance BD of this amount, all right, and you should know balance BD, then you have to work backwards for the balance CD, right? So this is given. So let's do this first, right? Balance CD, 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 right? Balance CD, and the amount is also 80, right? Yeah, so they give us the bottom one here. So we will just work backwards only. And the other one, we don't know, we have to find. Uh. So how to find this? Now we're going to put in all the information, all the double entry that we know, right? That's something to do with TR and put it back here and then we calculate, all right? So what are we focusing, people? We are focusing on trade receivable account, right? The one that with the most of the things, on, right? Most information and all. So we have to focus on DR side for the sales, focus on CR side for the cash and bank, focus on CR side, for discount allow, CR side for sales return, CR side for bad debt, and then after that, CR side again for contra, and lastly, a DR side for interest received. Okay, so the one that I circle is where we need to focus whether left or right side. So I always figure out the number first so that I don't put wrong side. Then only I come back to the details. Then you will never get this wrong. All right, so let's look at the first one, 7860. Is on the left side, DR, right? On the left side, 7860. Okay, this is on the DR side. So, what do I write for the details? Right, I have to write sales. So, you cannot put TR because this is TR title, right? Title is a TR, so you cannot put back TR. So, put sales here. Next one, all right? Next one is cash bank, right? So, CR, right? CR side, right hand side, uh, 5782. Okay, 5782. On the CR side and the details you put cash or bank. Okay, you cannot write, you cannot put the details as a receipt from credit customer. No, you have to put yeah, cash or bank. All right. Then discount allowed is a CRTR, so 118. 118. Then here we put discount allowed. Okay. Uh yeah, by the way, the date, if you want to put the date for the rest of date is April 30. Lah. The end of the month anyway that's have no marks ah. right next one then we have a uh, sales return cr side also cr side and how much is that uh sales return is 285 285 okay 285 okay we put sales return then after that we have bad debts bad debt is 260 on the cr side 260 CR side, you can put irrecover or you can put bad debt, no problem. Next one, we have uh, Contra, right? Contra is 300 CR side. So CR side, 300. And then we put Contra, Contra, okay? Or Contra entry also can. Did you just say Contra? Ah, Contra entry. So we just follow up, Contra entry. Let's follow what they give us, all right? And after that, last one, last one, we have debit side, okay, debit side, interest received. So left-hand side, 15, okay, 15, left-hand side here, 15. And you can just put interest charge also can, you can put interest received also can, no problem. 
All right. Yeah, that's all. all. Right. So we put in all the numbers that we need. So the PFDD not relevant. The cash sales not relevant. All right. Don't put inside. You put inside, then you cannot get the OF mark. All right. Now, moment of truth. Is it left side more or right side more? Seems like uh, it's going to be a left side more. Yeah, because we're trying to find the balance CDBD the other side. So left hand side more. So six, five, three, zero. A seven eight six zero plus fifteen. Oops. And plus also eighty. Right? Don't forget this also eighty here. Plus eighty. Total one four four eight five. Okay, one four four eight five. One four four eight five. So this side one four four eight five. Then the other side must be the same thing. One four four eight five. Then we take one four four eight five. Okay, minus one one zero balance BD minus five seven eight two the cash and bank minus one one eight discount allowed minus two eight five sales return minus two sixty bad debt and lastly minus three hundred contra we get seven six three zero seven six three zero let me change color so seven six three zero so what is this seven 630 this is our balance cd right this is the the debit side one the one that they put question mark so balance cd and then subsequently balance bd same number 7630 if you want to put the dates then this is may 1st or so lah. yep that's it all right yeah, how marks are given here? There's total nine marks here. So I believe whoa, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, high chance, high chance that the top balance BD don't give you marks, but the rest of them uh, will give you the marks. Ah. So that's how the nine marks are given. Yeah, not every item will, will be given, but we won't know. I mean, you won't know. I sometimes also don't know. I to see the marking scheme. It depends on who prepare the question and which part they want to give marks. Yeah, but we need to do everything. That's the sad part. All right, next one. Okay, there's another advice question. Yay, I start to love advice question. So Vanessa is considering whether or not to continue offering cash discount to her credit customer, right? Whether or not to continue offer cash discount. So advice what? Advice Vanessa whether or not she should continue to offer cash discount, right? So the recommendation part, the last part, just write down whether she should uh, continue or she shouldn't continue, okay? But you cannot straight away jump to conclusion without even gi giving them a single advantage or disadvantage. You get what I mean? Like you cannot just simply say, ah, she should continue, okay? But without having any, any like points at all. So if you do that, I doubt you will actually get the one mark, even though it's free. So that means you must die die, must come up with uh one advantage or one disadvantage, okay? And then only uh, you give your recommendation. You get what I mean? All right. So let's look at the uh, marking scheme. Okay. So what's the good thing and the bad thing offering cash discount? Marking scheme. Ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, all right here okay so the good thing yes if we offer cash discount which means cash will be received significantly uh, earlier yep because cash discount is to encourage prompt payment right remember okay prompt payment for cash discount which means we will get money earlier right so we get it significantly earlier number two right you give people discount of course your customer happy right so yeah good relationship with the customer maintain uh next one credit control cost may be uh reduced you see credit control cost technically means that people owe you money right if people owe you money uh you have to chase them right you have to chase them then after that you probably have to do a lot of things you probably like have to hire someone just to chase for money and stuff all this will give you uh higher costs right higher expenses so if you can allow to give cash discount, maybe people are more willing to, to pay earlier. Lah. And there's no guarantee, right? but, but this is like, well, what if this happened? That's why we put that as an advantage. 
okay so credit con control cost will reduce okay you don't need to like, hire people go and purposely collect money and all don't need to go and call our loan things like that all right uh, of course then if people pay early all right if people pay early then the bad debt also reduce so okay or accept any other valid point as usual okay then what about the disadvantages all right see people if people you know prompt payment and we give them a cash discount and technically they give us less lah, right it's like they owe me ten dollar if they pay me tomorrow uh, they only pay eight dollar well i get less there right the two dollars is my expenses man so less cash right receive then after that cash discount may not be enough to encourage earlier payment yeah this is very true also like yeah you offer imagine you offer 0 0.5 percent or one percent it's like yeah one percent so little for what la no need la just owe the guy first la, you know uh, yeah, people have this kind of mentality right so cash discount may not be enough to encourage uh, earlier payment okay not enough may not be enough okay after that if customer have insufficient fund to pay uh, the cash discount may have no effect yeah okay discount no effect because if i have no money you offer how much also no use unless you offer 100 percent <laughs> All right but nobody will do, will do that ma or not. so if i have no money i i can't just i just can't pay you so it has no effect on anyone that has no money all right so any other disadvantages that is make sense okay you put in you can also get the marks and finally as usual right, the recommendation so you give one first okay one each or just give any of the one if you, if you cannot think of the bad thing if you cannot think of the disadvantages or the advantages just give one point then you can write down your recommendation okay so what's the recommendation anything right? you can you can just say that uh recommend that Vanessa should continue to offer cash discount or recommend that Vanessa should not continue to offer cash discount full stop no need to say anything else because your points is already mentioned in the advantage or disadvantage you don't need to mention again all right so yeah it's only three marks so this is different from econs econs you have to like spam right a lot of things but accounts no we, we more more like to the point there all right and then after that uh part five question five oh question five is actually statement of affair and statement of affair is again topic uh 17 under incomplete record so yep this is uh not coming up for our midterm so therefore i am not going to discuss this okay to save the time for this video all right oh and then we have the last one all right so advice sean Okay, another advice question. So yep, standard, standard in IG there are three advice question, right? Standard lah. But uh, maybe you get two, maybe get two or maximum three lah. Or can be more than three. I don't know. All right. But so far, usually it's three advice question. All right. So advice Sean, whether or not she should maintain a double entry bookkeeping, uh, bookkeeping system for his business. So give one, uh, good and one bad. Right, of having a bookkeeping right so let's look at the marketing scheme again what's the advantages and disadvantages of uh, bookkeeping all right oh so many here all right let's look at the good thing first advantages okay advantages so if you have a bookkeeping yep it actually make us easier to pre uh, to produce right easier to produce our statement if you have all the information then you can uh easier to prepare income statement and easier to know like how much asset you have all these things and then eventually calculate lah, whether your uh, profit or loss you know, for your business okay enable greater accuracy of the financial record yep if you record everything then it's going to be accurate right yeah can you imagine you don't record anything like just one or few few weeks yeah. everyday business got so many transactions right yeah then something is missing then gg.com and uh, after that, yep, provide check and balances to possible to minimize the possibility of fraud. Fraud means uh, cheating, right? Scamming, or anyone want to like you know cheat your money and all they they go and change your information and everything. So yep, if you continuously to do double entry, right? There's a check and balance here. Okay, so this will minimize lah. Okay, minimize only. I mean, you, you know you cannot prevent fraud, right? And even people will also make error when they do recording. So much things. All right uh facilitates easier decision making easier for reference easier for comparison better understanding of financials yes all this answer is acceptable right any valid responses technically if you have all these things then you get to see your result and all right so it helps you to decide 
faster because you have all the information, you have all the facts. Uh, yep, it's easier for reference. Okay, you have to compare stuff also easier, right? Easier to understand all this. All right, and the disadvantages, right? Uh, may be complex and hard to understand for the non-accountant. Now, technically, people who don't study accounting, they are like, what the heck is debit credit? All right, so uh, the non-accountant, okay, might be uh, complex uh, for bookkeeping, all right? People who don't take accounts, they like, what the heck is this? Totally no idea. Even people who take accounts, so they, they are also struggling like to understand what this is and all. But given enough time, right, you guys will be good at this. All right, yeah, it's time-consuming, correct, man, all right? I mean, to do all the recording, it's not easy, right? To write down everything, you know, key in everything. That, that is very time consuming, actually. But of course, there are the good things, right? It will be counted off by the good things. And all. Uh, maybe costly to set up, yes. Actually, if you guys are getting uh, accounting software, it's not cheap. Accounting software can go up to like one software, 100 over 1000 also got, uh, 50k also got, cheap, cheap one also got, 1000 something also got, uh, free one also got nowadays. Uh. So you can find online, okay? So it all depends uh, how much okay, people want to pro inside. Uh, not all, all errors will be identified. Yep, we know that there are post CC errors and stuff like that. So yep, even you do all your bookkeeping correctly, sometimes people make some mistake. Okay, and then we cannot like identify the, the errors easier easily. Okay, then as usual, recommendation will give you the final marks. Okay, so I hope this video uh, at least help to clear some of the things that you guys want to ask. I'm so sorry, once again, I don't have enough time to actually uh, revise and discuss all the papers because I chose to uh, do topic by topic with you guys in class, which is why uh, I don't have the time for a whole paper. So I'd rather do a video and after that, I guess can just watch this and uh, uh, yep, so we still consider discuss the whole thing, right? Now, Okay, I'll see you guys in the next one. I will be making another video for another paper that I gave you, which I also don't have time to discuss in class. So sorry for that, but see you guys again.